In this example, we're given the graph of a quadratic function, and we're asked to find the equation for the graph in vertex form, sometimes referred to as standard form, as well as the equation in general form and factored form. Let's begin by analyzing the graph. Notice how the parabola opens down, and therefore this high point is the vertex. Notice how the vertex has coordinates negative three comma four. Also notice how there are two horizontal intercepts, one at this point, negative five comma zero, and one at this point, negative one comma zero. And then finally, we also have a vertical intercept at this point, zero comma negative five. Now let's review the vertex form of a quadratic function. Vertex form is the form f of x equals a times the quantity x minus h squared plus k, where the vertex has coordinates h comma k, and if a is positive, the parabola opens up, and if a is negative, the parabola opens down. So notice for our equation, a will be negative. So in our equation, the vertex has coordinates h comma k. In our graph, the vertex has coordinates negative three comma four. Notice how this tells us that h is equal to negative three and k is equal to positive four. So we already know two of the three unknowns that we need in order to write the equation in vertex form. We know that f of x must equal a times the quantity x. And notice how here it's going to be x minus negative three, which is the same as plus positive three. So we have the quantity x plus three squared, and then plus k, k is positive four, so we have plus four. So we do have to be careful about the sign here. We do have subtraction, but again, subtracting a negative is the same as adding a positive. The only thing left to do now is to find the value of a, which we know must be negative. To find the value of a, we can use any point on the parabola except the vertex, perform substitution for x and f of x, and solve for a. So let's use the vertical intercept of zero comma negative five. This point tells us that f of zero is equal to negative five. So again, the point zero comma negative five telling us that f of zero equals negative five. So we'll substitute negative five for f of x and zero for x. So we have negative five equals a times the quantity zero plus three squared plus four. Simplifying here, we have three squared, which is nine. Nine times a is nine a. So we have negative five equals nine a plus four. Next, we subtract four on both sides, which gives us nine a equals negative nine. Dividing both sides by nine, notice how we have a equals negative one. So now we know the equation in vertex form is f of x equals negative one times the quantity x plus three squared plus four. But because we have a negative one here, it's often written as f of x equals the opposite of the quantity x plus three squared plus four. Now looking back at our question, we're asked to enter the value of a, so a is negative one. We need to be careful about h. Remember, h is negative three, even though we have the quantity x plus three in our equation, again, because the form is the quantity x minus h squared. So the value of h is negative three, and the value of k is positive four. So the nice thing about having the equation in vertex form is we can quickly look at the equation, identify the vertex, and also identify whether the parabola opens up or down. Now the second part of the question asks us to write the equation in general form. So starting with vertex form, we will multiply out the right side and combine like terms. When multiplying this out, it'll probably be helpful to write the value of a as negative one. So we'll have f of x equals negative one times, we have two factors of x plus three, and then plus four. Multiplying the two binomials, we'll have four products. One, two, three, four. So we have f of x equals negative one times, 
x times x is x squared, x times 3 is 3x. Notice how for the next product we have 3 times x, which is also 3x. 3x plus 3x is 6x, and 3 times 3 is equal to 9. Next, we'll distribute the negative 1. So we have f of x equals negative 1x squared, or negative x squared, minus 6x, minus 9, and then plus 4. So our final form will be f of x equals negative 1x squared minus 6x, then negative 9 plus 4 is equal to negative 5, so we have minus 5. Again, notice how the coefficient of x squared is negative 1, but normally we drop the 1 and write this as f of x equals negative x squared minus 6x minus 5. And notice how for this part of the question, they're asking us to enter a, b, and c, which are the coefficients of x squared, x, and the constant. So again, to identify the values, it's probably easier to see in this form that a is equal to negative 1, b is equal to negative 6, and c is equal to negative 5. So again, a equals negative 1, b equals negative 6, and c equals negative 5. Just to review, remember, if we were trying to graph a quadratic function in general form, the equation of the axis of symmetry is x equals negative b divided by 2a. The vertex has coordinates negative b divided by 2a, comma f of negative b divided by 2a. And the value of a still tells us whether the parabola opens up or down. In fact, notice how the value of a in general form is the same as the value of a in vertex form. And then finally, the y-intercept of a quadratic function in general form has coordinates at 0, comma, c. Notice in our equation, c equals negative 5, and we already identified the vertical intercept as 0, comma, negative 5, this point here. And now the third part of this question asks us to write the equation in factored form, or this form here. So let's write the general form of the equation in this form. So beginning with the general form, And again, it might be helpful to write negative x squared as negative 1x squared. The first step is to factor out a, which we know is negative 1. But we should also recognize that if we were going to try to factor this, we would want the coefficient of x squared to be positive. So if we factor out negative 1, we'd have f of x equals negative 1 times the quantity x squared plus 6x plus 5. And now let's see if we can factor the trinomial. So we have f of x equals negative 1 times the factors of x squared are x and x. The factors of positive 5 that add to positive 6 are positive 5 and positive 1. So we have the quantity x plus 5 and the quantity x plus 1. So now we have the equation in the correct form. One benefit of having a quadratic function in factored form is it allows us to easily find the x-intercepts of the graph. Remember, in general, to find the x-intercepts, we set y or f of x equal to 0 and solve for x. So if we were going to find the intercepts, again, we're not asked to, but this is one benefit of having the function in factored form. We would set f of x equal to 0. So we'd have 0 equals negative 1 times the quantity x plus 5 times the quantity x plus 1. This product is equal to 0 when x equals negative 5 or when x equals negative 1. Again, notice how these x values give us the, the horizontal or x-intercepts here and here. So the last thing we need to be careful about is we're asked to write the equation in factored form when we have a times the quantity x minus m times the quantity x minus n. So we need to be careful about the sign when entering m and n. But to begin, we know a equals negative 1, which is the same for all three forms of the quadratic function. So looking back at this form here, let's write this as f of x equals, we could write negative here instead of negative 1 if we wanted to. But then if we had to write this as a difference, x plus 5 is equivalent to x minus negative 5. 
and x plus 1 is equivalent to x minus negative 1. Once we have it in this form, we can identify m and n. Notice how we're told that m must be less than n, and because negative 5 is less than negative 1, we now know m is equal to negative 5 and n is equal to negative 1. And notice how m and n are also the horizontal intercepts. So each form of a quadratic function has its benefits when it comes to graphing the function on the coordinate plane. I hope you found this helpful.